Welcome to Untied's workshop on Swiss darning, a great technique for knitted fabrics. You don't need a lot of supplies for this technique, but a darning mushroom or another round object such as an orange might be useful. We're going to use the mushroom for this exercise. Next, you'll need some yarn in a lighter weight than the yarn that your garment is made from. You can put it close to compare. You'll also need a thin thread to use as a support thread and some needles, a thin one for the support thread, and a thicker one, blunt, so not sharp to touch. Preferably this could be a tapestry needle. So let's get started. We need to have the support thread ready and we're going to put the mushroom inside the sleeve of this jumper and place it under the hole in the elbow. Swiss darning is a technique that you can use to reinforce a worn away area of a garment, but you can also use it to cover a hole. We start by studying the loops around the hole a little bit to understand where the rows go and where the loops are. You can see that there's still some loose threads here, but that's okay, we just leave them. We want to start working a few rows around the hole to make sure it doesn't open up again. Enter your threaded needle a couple of centimeters from where you want the Swiss darn to start and then start bringing it up in one of the rows next to the hole. You can leave a little tail hanging here, we're going to remove it afterwards anyway. Follow the row all the way up and make a stitch in the corresponding loop at the top of the hole. Then go back down again and now you want to go into the loop that you came from and up in the one next to it. So into the one we came from and up in the one next to it. Make sure that the rows are nice and straight, but don't pull them too tight. You don't want to pull the hole together. Now you just continue doing these support threads across the hole, making sure to keep the thread straight. If you're working on an area that is just worn away, but doesn't not yet have a hole, you don't need the support threads because you can follow the existing loops. You can also use a thicker thread as a support thread, but we find it easier with a thinner one. So we have now covered the hole with support threads and we're just exiting a little bit further to the side. Now we can pull the threads out a little bit and make sure that they're straight. And there we go, we are ready with a support thread. We're now going to start darning. We're going to start from the right hand side, so just where we came from with the support thread. You want to make sure that you have long enough thread, but something that is comfortable to work with. So you enter the fabric, just where the support thread came and you want to come up in the same loop as you did for the support thread. Now leave a little tail just like we did with the support thread. Now carefully make sure that you catch the first two support threads, loop the mending thread around the support threads without pulling too tightly and then go back into the same loop again that you came from. And then immediately come up in the loop next to it. And be careful now not to pull it too tightly. 
It should look like an upside down U. Now we take the next two support threads and we do the same thing, creating a little upside down U. Go back where you came from in the same loop and immediately exit in the loop next to it. If you make sure that you keep the loops, like little upside down U's, it will be much easier for you to follow the pattern. It can also help to study the knit a little bit before so that you understand where the threads go and in which direction. And we take up the support threads again and continue creating these little upside down U's, going, always going back into the loop that we just came from and immediately going up in the next one. If you get stuck in the actual fabric below, you can see that we have quite a lot of threads still here below. Don't worry too much about it. You can pull your needle up and down a little bit to make sure that you don't catch onto any threads that you don't want to. Now we're coming towards the end of our first row. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just attach the last loop in the existing fabric with a tiny little stitch before we start going in the other direction. So you see here I go into the white fabric tiny stitch. Here we've got the first row and it's finished. We now want to turn the work around and catch the existing loops. So as we go in the other direction, turn the work upside down catch onto the support threads again, but now instead of catching the existing loops, so in this case the white ones, you want to go back into the pink ones, so the ones that we just did in the previous row. You go back into the loop that you came from and you immediately pick up the next one. And you carefully create a little loop don't pull it too tightly, pull it around the support threads, back into the loop that you just came from, and up in the one next to it. We're using a very fine knit here with a very thin thread. It might be easier when you're learning this technique to use a thicker knit. It's a little bit easier to see what you're doing. So we just continue like this. The key is that you don't miss any of the loops. They need to be attached to one another. The, the whole thing with the knit is that one thread really keeps going. So if you lose one part of the thread, then the whole knit will easily start to unravel.
you can see here that towards the end of the hole I still have a little bit of the fabric below so if you still have a little bit of the existing fabric then you can hook the little loops into that fabric as well it just gives it a little bit extra support apart from the support threads it then becomes more like when you're reinforcing a fabric There we go, we're finished our second row, and as you can see for the last one, I'm just attaching it a little bit into the side, the existing fabric. And now we're turning it around and we're doing our third row, just in the same manner. We loop around the support thread, go into the little stitch that we just came from, immediately up in the one next to it, and we loop around again. A common mistake when doing Swiss darning is when you pull the thread too tightly and you don't leave a loop, it will just be a sort of a straight stitch almost. And then when you come back in the other direction, you won't have a loop to put your needle back into. It is a common mistake that I made a lot in the beginning. And there we go, we have finished our third row. We're now going to speed this up a little bit because you've really seen what the technique is all about. You might still need to practice it, but once you get a hold of it, it really isn't that difficult. Now we've come to the very last row, so I'm just pulling the threads a little bit to keep it in place. For the very last row, what we're going to do is we're just going to follow the support thread. So you see here the little purple thread, I'm just following it into the white material. And then, like before, going back into the loop that I just came from. Oops up into the one next to it, then again following the purple support thread, going back where I came, up immediately in the one next to it, and then following the support thread. So here it's important that you do attach the 
mending thread into the existing garment because otherwise it will unravel. It's also on this last row that you have a chance to kind of tighten the fabric a little bit because now you don't have to worry about not being able to find your loops on the next row. And now you see we've come to the very end. This is the last support thread. Now I'm just going to finish it off with a last loop and then just exit on the side of the fabric and then leaving a tail of the thread just like I've done before. There we go. We finished the mending. So now we're going to look at all of these loose ends because I've been changing the thread a couple of times. So I'm going to show you what to do with those. Turn the fabric inside out. And here we've got all the little loose ends. So just pull them to the inside of the garment with a needle careful so that you don't get stuck into anything. And then you thread this on a needle and you just start sort of sewing it in to the existing knit. So carefully so that the stitches don't become visible from the outside. But apart from that, as long as you attach it to something, it doesn't really matter how and where you go. I would just go up and down like this a couple of times to make sure that the thread is secured. And then you can just cut it off. And you do this with the other loose ends as well. And now we're going to remove the support thread. So because we have a very thin support thread, you can use a needle and a pair of scissors. These scissors are quite sharp, it's embroidery scissors, and that's quite helpful when you've got such a fluffy knit that we have. And so you just carefully pull and sometimes cut the thread. Of course, be careful so that you don't cut the actual mending yarn pull the thin thread out and then just cut it off. And I'm just going to continue like this until there are no more support threads left.
And there we go, that's the finished mended patch. I hope you enjoyed this workshop and please join us soon again for another one.